Hallelujah. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred and he can uh, begin to share what's in his heart. Uh, we have Wayne and Bernice with us and Lucy and and uh, just uh, grateful to all of you. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Threshold to an Open Door. And what the Lord said to me a few days ago was that there's a great door open to each and every one of you. And it's time for us to recognize these doors and, and go through them. It's a new season. Um, Amen. Some people think they've plateaued or leveled out, but let me tell you, there's doors open. There is no limit in the supernatural realm. So we are beginning this series uh, to the walking in the supernatural. Uh, it's something that we all need to do, need to be aware of, and how to go through spiritual doors because God has opened them to us. And we're going to start with just a few verses to uh, to give some background on this. And I've asked Sherry to, to read a verse. We'll start here. Uh, and I have some verses. And after she reads a verse, I'm going to comment on it. And then we'll go on with the message beyond that. Okay. And, and this is, comes from the New American Standard Translation. It's Acts 14, 27. When they arrived and gathered the church together, they began to report all the things that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. Oh, glory to God. It, it's open. It's already open. God has already opened a door to you. It says the Gentiles. Well, I believe that's you. That's me. Amen. amen. Well, he has opened the door. He's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, from 2 Corinthians 2, it, it talks about there are doors open in the Lord, in the Lord. So these are spiritual doors. It's not talking about natural doors, but all the, though there are natural doors that open, the spiritual doors open natural doors. And mm -hmm. uh, that's important. It's important to know that your back is not against a wall and you have no yeah. way out. Hallelujah. There is a way of escape. Jesus makes a way of escape. Mm -hmm. He has put an open door before you, okay? That's another okay. verse. Okay. First Corinthians 16, 9. For a wide door for effective service has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Well, I'd like to say you're not going to have any problems, but hey, this says when the door is <laughs> open, there are adversaries out there. What? There there are many adversaries, and that's really something we're going to be focusing on tonight, mm -hmm. because we're going to have to deal with adversaries in order to go through uh, through these doors. And let me just say why there are adversaries uh, there, and, and it goes back to the fall of man uh, in Genesis, and uh, God talks to the woman and to the uh, serpent and says that uh, uh, you're going to be enemies and your descendants are going to be enemies the the, uh, the offspring of the devil and the serpents are going to be enemies with the of descendants of the woman and that's all of us we've got enemies yeah yeah and and, and they're they're there and it, it was said uh, right there at the fall of mankind there are enemies now this obviously and absolutely applies to Jesus Christ. It says in uh, Genesis 3 that uh, her descendant is going, the woman's descendant is going to crush the head of the serpent, but the serpent will uh, bruise his heel. And that mm -hmm. is absolutely Jesus Christ, but it is also absolutely you and me, because we're going to have to deal with serpents and uh, demons and crush their head. But that's that's the outcome. That's the final outcome. But we've got to uh, overcome the serpents. It's a really important concept and we're going to be addressing it tonight. Okay, Sherry, another verse. Okay. Colossians 4, 3. Praying at the same time for us as well that God will open up to us a door for the word so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned. Okay, so what he says here is that you can pray for the door to be open. Now, it's a, it's a door of faith. 
It's in the supernatural realm. You can pray that it be open. And so it's not just uh, cir uh, circumstances. It's you can pray. You can take charge of your life mm -hmm. and your situation and pray and pray for the door, a spiritual door to be open for you to a new season, because mm -hmm. that's what what it is. It opens to a new season, to a higher level. And it's uh, something that's important for all of us. We are not stuck uh, at this level where we are, we can go through a spiritual door and go to a higher level, a new season. Things are going to change. Okay, one more verse. Okay, Revelations 3 8. Revelation 3 8. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no man can shut because you have a little power and have followed my word and have not denied my name. So here in Revelation 3, 8, it says that Jesus is opening a door to us. And, and he is no respecter of persons, and he shows no partiality. And so if he has opened a door to one, he'll open a door to another. And so the way we get the door open is to be obedient to the word of God and to lift up. See, what he's saying is you've held up the word of God. You've held up the name of Jesus. And a door is open to you. When you meet these conditions, you hold up the word of God, you hold up the name of Jesus, doors are open to you. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to give some uh, personal examples tonight about how this works. But there's a really uh, interesting aspect, and it goes back to what uh, the verse Sherry read in 1 uh, Corinthians 16, 9. It mm -hmm. says, doors are open and adversaries. Then there are many mm -hmm. adversaries. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I wish it wasn't that way, but that's the way it is. That's the way it came out of the Garden of Eden. Right. Uh, the fall of mankind. There are enemies. You have enemies and there are serpents. We just talk to them in general terms. There are serpents, but it's demonic. There are enemies and you can crush their head. Hallelujah. Okay, Hallelujah. so in the Old Testament, there's this word threshold. And so on doors, there are thresholds. You have to go over the thresholds. Now, in our modern uh, time period and in, uh, in this country, we think of a threshold as being a, a piece of wood or a piece of uh, a metal uh, or stone at the, at the bottom of the door. And you have to step over it. Well, I've been into some uh, places in some countries where you have uh, a tremendous uh, uh, threshold. It might be a 18 inches high, and they uh, build it like that so they don't uh, have their house flooded uh, so, mm -hmm. for different reasons, but, but that's one reason. And so the threshold, you have, sometimes you have to step over the threshold in order to go through the door. And that's what, what the Bible talks about, these thresholds. Now, what's really interesting about this word threshold it, in the Hebrew, it comes from the word snake mm. and so you have to step <laughs> over a snake yes or step yeah. over snakes in order to go through the door amen and, and uh, sherry and i this is a very vivid illustration for us because uh, a few months ago we were having some uh, food delivered uh, from the grocery store and uh, we hear screaming outside the front door mm -hmm. and uh, sherry opens it up and the woman says there's a snake uh, by your door, there's a big snake there. Yeah, and big, she yeah. she couldn't bring the uh, food in. She didn't want to come up there and step over the snake. So we have a vivid image of a snake <laughs> at the door. At the door, and, and there are snakes at the door. Okay, so let's fast forward then to Moses and uh, in Exodus chapter three and and verse and chapter four, uh, the Lord appears to uh, uh, Moses in a burning bush. Mm. And he tells him to take off his uh, shoes because he's standing on holy ground. Now, in that uh, passage, the Lord says, I have heard the cry of my people, uh, the descendants of Israel, he's talking about. And he says, I've heard the cry of my people, and I have come down to deliver them. I've come down to judge uh, the situation, and I have come to mm. deliver them. And you think, well, okay, God's just going to do it. Well, but he's going to use a person. He's going to use Moses. Yes, he's going yes. to send Moses. But he said, I'm going to do it. 
but I'm sending you as my representative. Well, it's the same, it's the same for you. God's going to do things, but he's going to use you to do it. He's going to send you to, to do some things. And in the new season, you have to realize that you have to step over a threshold that has snakes in that threshold. Okay, so uh, Moses said, well, what if these people uh, don't accept me and they don't believe uh, that you have sent me? And uh, the Lord said, well, what do you hold in your hand? He said, I hold a staff. Well, a staff represents authority. But he said, put that down on the ground, throw it down on the ground. And when he threw it down on the ground, uh, it turned into, into a, a snake. snake. Okay. So when he went down to Egypt, when Moses and Aaron went to Egypt, they went to Pharaoh, the first test, and this will be the same first test for you as well, when you're ready to go through a new season, go into a new season, go through a new door, you've got to go through the threshold, and there's going to be snakes there. The first test that Moses and Aaron encountered were the snakes. And mm -hmm. so, um, of course, now the process, what was going on here, was that Moses was wrestling authority over Egypt out of the hand of Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh's mm -hmm. not going to like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. he, he's been the man in charge. That's right. And he doesn't want to turn it over. But, but Moses is going to take authority over Egypt out of the hand of Pharaoh. And the first thing that he encounters is a bunch of snakes. Mm -hmm. So there oh, Aaron goodness. has his, uh, has his uh, uh, staff, which represents the authority of God. And uh, Aaron throws down his staff. And uh, all the sorcerers uh, for Pharaoh, they throw down their staff and, and they all turn into snakes. snakes. You have a bunch uh, of snakes. Uh oh, to, you have to go into the new season, you're going to deal with snakes. You've got to overcome them. You crush their head. Now, mm -hmm. Aaron's snake, his uh, staff ate up all the other snakes, <laughs> all the other snakes. Hello, and, and God has given you authority to destroy the snakes, to crush mm -hmm. their head. you got to do it. Hallelujah. And so Aaron then picked up his snake and it turned into a staff in his hand. But the first test, and see, I'm talking about tests here, trying of your faith. See, 1 Peter 1, 7 says the trying of your faith is very precious mm -hmm. it, of your faith. It, it's like gold in yeah, a fire amen. that refines it and purifies it. And that's what testing of your faith is all about, uh, to refine your faith uh, as by fire. Woo, glory! First Peter 1, 7. Okay, so then let's fast forward to the New Testament. Okay, Jesus, of course, is born of the Spirit and, and born of the Spirit, just like you and I are born, born when we are born again. But he... He wasn't born again. He was just born of the spirit. And when he was born of the spirit, then for about 30 years, uh, he grew in, in uh, wisdom and in favor of God and, and with man. And he was a man of the law for 30 years. And then he went down to the Jordan River. Amen. And there, John the Baptist was uh, baptizing. And uh, John the Baptist looked at Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God, that takes away Wait, the sin of the world. Jesus asked John to baptize him. Now, John didn't really want to because he didn't feel uh, that he had uh, the, author the authority to do that, but he did. And, and because it, let's be obedient to what God is telling us to do, Jesus said. And uh, then when Jesus came out of the water, uh, he, he was baptized in the water. Then he came out of the water. When he came out of the water, he was immersed in the spirit. The dove uh, came down upon him and, and uh, lit upon him, and he was immersed in the spirit. Okay, now up until then, he was a man of the law, and now he's going to be transformed into a man of the spirit. And, and so the spirit drove him to where the snakes were. Ooh, he, didn't want to go. he didn't want to go. He, he'd been a man of the law. He, he, he was doing <laughs> well in the temple. In in the temple. Oh. That, that was where. The, oh, let me go back to the I temple. I want to go back to the temple. But the spirit drove him 
to where the snakes were in the wilderness. Where do you encounter snakes but in the wilderness? Because Jesus, there's a new door opening to him, a new season. And in this season, he's going to not only preach the gospel, he's going to demonstrate the gospel with signs, signs and, and wonders, wonders and miracles. miracles. But he's, it's a new season. He's got to go Amen. through the snakes. Amen. He's got to crush the snakes before he goes into the new season. And, and so he goes in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he's fasting and praying, and, and the snake comes to him, and the devil, because the devil is the snake, and he's your adversary, and, and he comes to Jesus, and, and he gives him dem temptations, and but Jesus, he is fasting, and he's praying, and he's always responding uh, to the temptations and to the test, with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, not only is it the word of God, but it's the precise scripture that's needed, the right scripture for the right time, and that yes. is yes. The, the sword, sword of, of the, the spirit. spirit. Yeah, you can spew Woo! out all, you can spew out a lot of scriptures, but if it's not the right scripture at the right moment with the power of God behind it, it's not the spirit of uh, the sword of the spirit that's right it has to be the right spirit the right scripture at the right time with the power of god behind it to cut off the head of the snake that's what jesus did so he was operating in the sword of the with the sword of the spirit because he was fasting and he was focusing on the word of god and he always came back with the right scripture and then he could go up to the temple again and he could say, oh, now the Spirit the Lord is upon me. me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel hallelujah. and to demonstrate the gospel, to set the captives free. There's a new season, but to go into the new season and go through the new door, he had to go over the threshold and there were snakes there that he had to deal with and he had to crush. Well, the same thing applies to you and me. And I want to give a, a, a couple of uh, personal stories. These are very different, but they give you some idea about how this operates. Because you see, in Matthew 16, uh, Jesus said, this is what's going to happen to believers. Believers are going to, uh, they're going to cast out demons. They're going to uh, speak, speak with, with new, new tongues. And they're going to deal with the snakes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the snakes are not going to hurt them. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're a believer, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to cast out demons. You're going to speak, speak with, new, with tongues. new tongues. And you're going to crush the head of the snake. You're going to deal, have to deal with snakes. So when you go into a new season, you go through the threshold to an open door, a great door. And the, and the Lord is saying to each and every one of you, there is a great effective door, door open amen, to you, amen. a door of effective service. But you've Hallelujah. got to go through over the threshold. You've got to deal with the snakes. The first story I want to talk about is my own story. And then I'm going to tell one about Sherry. And uh, my own story, uh, this is one which I had to deal with snakes. And, and that was I was a professor at the university. And, and I was teaching. And I was happy to be a professor and, and uh, doing research. And I was satisfied in that. And that was going to be my career. And I didn't need to do anything other than that for my career. But then the Lord spoke to me one day and said that I was going to uh, be an administrator, <laughs> move into administration. It wasn't my desire. I didn't have any desire to go into administration, but he desired that for me. That's what he wanted. And so I was obedient to it. That, there, I didn't question it. I just, okay, you, that's what you want. I'll be that. And so I became... I had an, uh, a temporary administrator, and then I applied for uh, a permanent position. Well, that's when the snakes came out. Yep. A and uh, lots of them. God wanted me to be the administrator, but the people didn't want me to be the uh, administrator. And, and later, the Lord <laughs> said to me that He wanted me to establish righteousness that's in, right. that, in that area uh, because He was concerned about the students and, and He wanted righteousness. Uh, in the teachers and, and uh, for them to be uh, righteous people and, and acting and, and speaking righteously. And uh, so uh, 
people opposed me. A lot of people opposed me. As a matter of fact, the majority of people opposed me and they, as a majority, they uh, preferred another person, another candidate. And I said, I don't care. But God said I was going to be the administrator. So they made an offer to another man and, and, and he wouldn't take the job. There were too many snakes here. He didn't want the, he didn't want the job. So, I, so they offered me the job because I had because God had said I was going to be the administrator. And when I became the administrator, uh, the prophetic word came forth uh, in the reception, the first reception I had uh, uh, to be a new uh, administrator. And uh, uh, the prophetic word that Jerry gave it was that there was going to be uh, seven, seven years, years of great prosperity under me. And there was. OK, but I, I cleaned out a bunch of uh, evil in the yeah, department and yeah. I brought hired a bunch of new people and, and brought in righteousness. So I did exactly what the Lord wanted me to do. It wasn't my desire, it wasn't my plan, it wasn't my career or my plan for my career. But when God spoke it out, I was going to do it. And even though the people didn't want it to happen, it happened because God said it was going to happen. That's the first example. Amen. The first Amen. Example. Now the second example is totally different, but it's a, an example with Sherry, again, where she had to deal with snakes. And that was, uh, she was having some health issues and going to the doctor and, uh, and we were praying. Now, let me say this, that there, there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor. And so Sherry went, went to a doctor, but I also want to say this. And this was one, this was the very first thing the Lord ever spoke to me that I ever heard him say, God does not bring evil upon his people in order to accomplish good, good. in their lives. Let me say that again. God does not bring evil upon his people in order to accomplish good in his, in their lives. Uh, so if it's evil, it's not coming from God. And sickness is an evil and it's not coming from God. God doesn't have it, any sickness in heaven. So how can he give you Amen. sickness? How can he give you cancer? Because he, you can look in heaven and you won't see any uh, cancer in heaven. That's so right. he can only give you what he has and he only has good. And every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven. Okay, so yeah. Sherry was having some health issues. She went to the doctor, but we continued to seek the Lord and pray about it. And uh, that was in 1992. And uh, uh, on December the 2nd, the Lord said to me, and I've told this story before, but I want you to realize that we were dealing with snakes and that you have to overcome the snakes and how to do it. Uh, because... Uh, we all are in these same kinds of uh, situations. We're dealing with them and we have to know how to overcome. Okay, so the on December the 2nd, the Lord said, we have the victory over this. I was praying and that's what he said to me. And when he didn't said it, I marked an X on the, on the floor. This, we have the victory over this. Amen. On December the 30th of that year, the doctors called her and said she had six months to live and that she would never, even if uh, they could get it, uh, they were going to operate on her. And uh, if they could get the cancer, uh, that she'd never uh, preach again or, or never sing again or never be able to do anything like that. Uh, but, you know, that didn't happen like the doctor said. Hallelujah. Okay. But we were, see, we were continuing to seek the Lord. And, and so when... Uh, she came and got me. I was out praying, uh, walking and praying, and she knew where I was. And so she had received a, a call that three men, uh, three doctors said uh, she had terminal cancer and she would not live six months. Okay. And uh, so she came and got me. And when I got into the car, she told me that she wouldn't live six months. And I said, we have the victory over this. And the second thing I said mm -hmm. was, go home, pack your suitcase. We're going to go off and seek the Lord. Okay, so we're seeking the Lord. Uh, so we, we involved the doctors, but we didn't put our trust in the doctors. Our trust was What's in, in the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. And, and so don't put your trust in doctors. You've got to put your trust in the Lord. And, and if, if you need doctors, go to the doctors. I don't have any problem with that. But put your trust in the Lord. You know, there was a king that uh, he sought to the uh, physicians first, first. And, and he died. He didn't seek God first. Mm -hmm. Well, we were seeking God first. And, and, and here were the, 
uh, cancer and, and the demonic forces coming in Sherry against her physically and emotionally and, and mentally in all different ways mm -hmm. uh, coming against her. But we were seeking the Lord and the Lord spoke to her one day. I'm just going to give this quickly. Um, and um, said that uh, she shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. And uh, that was uh, Psalm 118, verse 17, 17, I believe. Okay, so that was the scripture. That See, that was the sword, sword of, of the, the spirit. spirit. So Amen. she could speak that because she'd heard it from the Lord. She had, could hear, uh, speak it. That's the sword of the spirit. And I could speak, we have the victory over this because that's what I had heard from the Lord. And so we were seeking the Lord even in this time in which the uh, demonic attack uh, was coming strong against her. We never gave up seeking the Lord, trusting in the Lord. Our trust was in the Lord. A and uh, and I was teaching about healing. I, I was teaching for six weeks. A and uh, of course, that all started on, on December the 30th when she got the bad report. But on January the 8th, I started a six-week series in a local congregation teaching about healing. And I told them, uh, the doctors say she's going to die in six months, but I say she's going to be healed in this period of six weeks in which I'm teaching. Sure enough, she was healed that night, uh, and the Lord raised her up yeah. uh, off of the off, off of the bench, off of the bench, levitated her off of the off of the bench, and, and healed her. And uh, she did go through the surgery. The doctor came to her and said, uh, uh, "I can't explain it, uh, Mrs. White, but." Uh, we three doctors uh, agreed that you had uh, terminal cancer, but uh, when we got inside and the operation, we found nothing. Somebody got in there first. And Sherry said, well, it was Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, but that's not the end of the story. You right. heard that part. But, but more of the story was two weeks later. See, she had dealt with some snakes, some demonic attack against her life. Uh, she had been attacked. Uh, uh, dealing with it, uh, and we continued to trust in the Lord. The Lord healed her, made her ever would whole. And two weeks later, two weeks after the surgery, the Lord appeared to her. Uh, I believe you were in bed, is that right? Mm -hmm. and, and came to her, and she saw him. She didn't see his face, but she saw his outline, uh, his figure. And, and he said, Raise your right hand. I'm going to put my hand in your hand. And then what happened? Amen. And then what did he say? And he said, From this moment on, uh, there will be a special anointing for healings and miracles. And so that was um, the new season that the Lord was taking me into. Okay, but see, so, she had to overcome those natural attacks, those demonic attacks, all of those attacks against her. She had to overcome them, but it was going into a new season. The Lord touched, put his hand in her hand, gave miracles in there, putting miracles in there. And let me say that last Saturday, uh, it was seen that a blue flame was coming out of her hand. And, and she looked it up and, and uh, a blue flame is the hottest flame. Uh, it's hotter than a red flame, a white mm -hmm. flame, a yellow flame, an orange flame. And the white flame, of course, is a, a hotter than that. But the blue flame is the hottest flame. And that's the fire mm -hmm. that comes out of her hands. And so that's the reason there's so many miracles that happen in Sherry's life and in her ministry, uh, she's raised uh, people from the dead. She, there have been many miracles. People uh, received new hearts, new livers, uh, lots of things. But, but Jesus had put her, his hand in mm -hmm. her hand and said that, that there were miracles in her hand. And, and now uh, there are blue flames that are coming out of her hand. So that was a new season for her. And so, well, and the person that it happened to, and I didn't see the, the blue flame come out. I knew there was electricity in my hands when I was praying over her. And uh, but it was Miss Judy. And uh and uh and so uh just let let's let Judy say what Judy, uh, you yeah. say something? Yes. Tell us what you saw because I didn't see the blue flame. Okay, can you hear there me you now? Go. now? Yeah, we can hear, we can hear you. <laughs> I was really expectant 
I always receive when when Sherry prays. And so I had my hands up and she had her hands up facing mine. And she stopped before touching me to tell somebody to get behind me because she knew that I would be slaying the spirit. And that's what she said. Get behind her, get behind her. So she moved her right hand and I suddenly, my hand was about that far from her. And suddenly the, the flames filled the space between our hands. Hallelujah. It was, it, it didn't just like start and then get bigger. It was just there. And it wasn't up here and down there. It was between our hands. And I couldn't take my eyes off of it <laughs> to see what was happening on the other side. So I don't know what happened on the other side. <laughs> I could not take my eyes off that plane. And what I noticed about it was that it was swirling. It was gaseous. It was not, it was not like just a regular fire, but it was swirling in and and it was blue, but you could also see through it. Oh it wow! Wow! Something solid. It was wow. you could see through it, and mm. then when she um, started to pray for me and touched me, it there was a bolt that knocked me down. Yeah, <laughs> you know, usually yeah, there's a have... usually there is a process in the spirit moving in me. That's when I would go down, but not the not that time when she touched me, and I don't know what you said, I don't know what you said, but when she touched me, I went I went back. It was like a concrete floor, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know. Of course, it doesn't hit, it doesn't hurt you when it's that way when God's doing it. Amen. But, Amen. Uh, I did not say a word to Sherry or anybody else about that. I am, and, and we were in the same car. I didn't mention it on the way home. I know you didn't. I thought yeah. she probably saw it. I mean, if I was still so blown away that I didn't even discuss it. And then a day or so later, I thought maybe I ought to call Sherry and see if she saw what I saw. Yeah, that was, was, that was beautiful. Then I was really surprised that you didn't see it. Right, right. And that nobody else saw it. And right. I will never be the same and I will <laughs> never back down from my story. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank uh, you, thank you Judy, for sharing that. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Thank Amen. you for see, see, sharing it with me. Amen. See, oh. see what, what we're just giving you some different examples. There is this basic principle that from the fall of mankind, there, there is this struggle going on that for us to go into a higher season, a new season, and that's available for all of us to go through a, a door, a wide door, a great door. And that's what the Lord is saying is available to you, but you've got to realize that there are snakes that are going to try to cover up the door and try to block you from going into it. Now, we've given you two different kinds of examples here uh, about in my career, but God was speaking to me. God was making things happen and yet the snakes were coming out against me. And then we talk about Sherry that uh, just overcome some uh, terminal cancer uh, ter that was going to be, she was going to die in six months to overcome that. But we were continuing to seek the Lord, follow the Lord. And, and there was a door of being open, a, a great effectual door mm -hmm. of effective service so that the Lord was going to put his hand in her hand and put miracles in it, and, and it's continued to uh, happen all of these years. Uh, that was 1993, in January 1993, and the miracles have continued to increase in the fire, and uh, although Sherry didn't see the blue flame uh, last Saturday, a, a week ago, but she did know it was, she had so much energy. Flow, yeah, electricity. Electricity flowing through her hands that Judy was going to fall down when she put it on as other people. And so these are just examples that God opens uh, effective doors. Now, the trying of your faith. If we had put our trust in the doctors then. I'd there, be dead today. She would be dead today. Within six months, she would have been dead. So you have 
you, you, it's okay. I have no problem. You go into a doctor and if a doctor can relieve your symptoms, but put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Put Amen. your trust in the Lord. So if you're going to go into a new season and, and, and then you just, and I've seen this a lot of times that people put their trust in the doctors because they think everything's natural. But when we're talking mm, about spiritual super, yeah. and supernatural things here and to go through supernatural doors, You've got to be fighting and you've got to be overcoming supernatural uh, glory to God, applying supernatural principles and, and overcoming. And that's what this is about. And that's what this message today is about, that sure, God is opening great doors, but there may be conflicts and it's that's not right. coming from God, It's but it will try your faith. You've got to have your faith out there. If you're not putting your faith out there there's no trying of your faith and these are doors of faith and the doors are spiritual doors and to go through them you have to have your faith and put your trust in the lord thank yeah, you for being yeah, here today i'm excited you. about this uh, new series and i'm yes, going to turn I it over too. to here i am too and i know that that some of you are getting ready to go through some new doors and and into a new season uh, with your careers, with your ministry, uh, with, with the things that you're doing for the Lord. And, um, and so uh, we don't bring this message to you to, to bring any fear uh, upon you because you have the word of God. You have every weapon uh, that you need uh, to fight the good fight of faith. And that's what we're encouraging you. You know, there are some that that some of those snakes are emotional uh things like discouragement um uh, things that you know that you're not fully equipped to go into the new season uh, uh just thoughts uh the you know the mind or to bring all those thoughts captive uh and so i say unto you uh those of you that are looking for um a new job those of you that are uh, going into um, a season of ministry that you haven't uh, been in before. Uh, for instance, uh, I see several teachers uh, in the midst here uh, that you've got an anointing to teach and, and you've been thinking about that more and more that you need to be teaching the word of God and, uh, but you've held back. And, uh, but see, even that is an enemy, not thinking that you're fully equipped uh, to do what God has called you to do. So I encourage you tonight uh, to go over the threshold of that new door, but go over knowing full force that you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith uh, to, to please the Lord, uh, to, to do what he's calling you to do. And, um, and this is something that, um, you know, they... The 10 spies said that they, they, you know, they brought back a bad report. You know, we're like little grasshoppers in their eyes. You know, there's big giants over there in the land. Uh, but there were two that said they had a different spirit. And it was Caleb and Joshua. And they were ready. They were ready to go with the Lord's uh, power. They were ready to go with his authority. And I think that that's what we need to remember as we go to this this next level i know i have sensed in my spirit and, and even uh this morning as i was ministering uh that there is a there's more for me to do i've got more that he wants me to do and i'm going to have to uh, depend on the lord to give me the strength and to give me uh the the wisdom uh to know how to kill the snakes that are on the other side of the threshold. So I'm going to open up the floor uh, for comments concerning this, this message. What are you going to take with you? Uh, and if you have a word of encouragement, if you have a word uh, for anyone, uh, then let's bring it forth uh, now. So just unmute yourself. This is Paul. Okay, okay Paul. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I just want to humbly submit something to you that you just said that I, 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 I believe you were trying to explain a concept, but it, it wasn't, uh, what you said was you're prepared to go through the thresholds and deal with the snakes that are on the other side. Right, right. I, I want to, I want to encourage you that the snake is at the threshold. And right, when you step right. on the threshold and you step on the snake, yeah. he's, then you come into the Lord's presence and the snake and the enemy's not there anymore. Right. So there yeah. are, I'm in, I'm in, I'm there are in. not, there are not snakes on the, on the other side. Yeah, that's good. You're, you're that's coming good. into the presence of the Lord and he's there and the enemy can't be there. Okay. So, so the stepping on the snake is as you're going through the door. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, once you're through the door, the enemy's not there. That's good. I mean, I would I encourage mean. you to consider that. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Very good. So, very good. It's good. Thank you. Uh, Becky? Um, right in align with um, uh, what our brothers just brought forth, uh, the wonderful thing about this threshold is that there is a lintel up above it and there are the doorposts beside it and on that lintel above it is the blood of a lamb and on the doorpost is the blood of the lamb and so you know when i go through there and i stomp the head of that snake he's already crushed he's already nothing and if he's trying to lift up his head we just need to remind him that it's nothing that he is dust and stomp his head right back down where Jesus did it with his cross. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. And, and in this group, in this group here tonight, there is a whole group right here of lentil sheep because of the sheep that went on that lentil post was the lamb that was offered that would be the blood that the angel, death angel, would pass over when he saw that blood of that lentil sheep. And the Lord says, I've got one lentil sheep in every family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For that family, for my blood to be over that family. And whoever came in that household, Whoever came into that household, I don't care if they were Egyptian or Gentile or whatever, if they got into that household, they were, the death angel was spared. And so we know that the intercession of that lentil sheet on that lentil post and on those doorposts, thank God that when that snake might try to be there, but we just like you said, uh, Sister Sherry, we don't fear him. We That's right. Oh, no. That's we, right. We don't fear him because he knows that he's already crushed and he has no option but to try to do what he can because his time is short. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Someone else, <coughs> what are you going to take with you from this message? Yeah, you're on. yeah, I just have a very simple thing to say. Okay. And that is that what everything that's been said today proves the point that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. That no matter what method or what entry place that he has planned to attack, I believe that God has an army to fight in my behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just going to lean on the Lord and trust him. Yes. Uh, with every step that I make. So as I move forward to do these things, you know, I'm just going to just worship God and expect him to move for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Someone else? Jamie, speak to us tonight. Uh, it's me. Oh, okay, okay. I went to the pizza shop tonight to get my granddaughter some pizza. And um, 
this one, this young girl, she had to be maybe 17. And she kept saying to, and she told me I had about 10 minutes to wait for my pizza. So I'm sitting back. And she kept telling everybody, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Every customer, God bless you. I said, this girl has a sweet spirit. So when it was my time, she said, well, God bless you. And I said to her, I said, uh, I felt like the Lord said, just say something to her. And I said, you know, you have a beautiful spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 That's a little witness like that. She's witnessing to people. Yes, amen. She's witnessing. I don't know if she really knows what she's doing, but she is being a witness just by saying, God bless you. She may not even get a God bless you back or thank you. But mm -hmm. the Lord is using that young girl. And I just told her, you have Amen. a beautiful Amen. 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 She needs that encouragement. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, Jamie, you have something to say. Uh, the pressure is always the hardest during the final push of the labor. Yes. So when you're going through that threshing floor, the pressure and the heat always seems the hardest, always seems the hottest. The flames always seems to be turned up the highest. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's part of the crushing process of stepping on that snake's head and part of uh, entering into your new season. And, uh, and so I believe that there's a lot of people on here tonight that is right there on the brink of breaking through the barrier and breaking through that wall, if you will, and stepping on these snakes' heads right. and right. Say, because they're feeling the pressures of life. They're feeling the pressures and anxiety of things that's going on around them. And it's nothing more than the enemy trying to raise his head up. But that's right, know, that's right. But, but when we know where we stand in Christ, we can step on that enemy's head and we can say, hey, we are victorious. We are winners because like uh, Rebecca just said, there's blood over the doorpost. Amen, amen, amen. Us. There's blood over our lives that says that we are victorious and that there's boundaries around us that surround us. It says no matter what the situations look like, no matter what... Uh, the enemy throws at us, we hold the staff in our hand that we can cross yeah. over into that uh, that authority and cross over at that uh, threshold into our promised land and be right. victorious. Amen. 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 So it Excellent. goes back to what Fred was saying about that, uh, that uh, also the, uh, the, the mantle of authority that you walk in when you're holding that staff in your hand because you have that authority to throw that thing down and say, hey, we're crushing the heads of the enemy yes. to walk yes. into this promised land that God yes. gave us. Yes. Amen. Amen. So just know that you're victorious, even uh, even in the final pushes of crossing over that threshold, hold tight to God's word, just like uh, uh, the word that that they stood on in regards to situation look bad when it comes to the cancer with, uh, uh, with mm -hmm. Cherry, but they stood on the word of God and was able to cross over that threshold into yeah. being victorious because the blood and the scriptures have been applied to their life. Wow. Amen. So, amen. So just continue uh, to stand on his word to apply the blood and know that you're covered uh, through all that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. This yes. Is Jonathan. Hey, good evening. Yes, Hi. Jonathan. Yes, go. Thank you so much for tonight's word. You had asked a question at the end is, what are you going to take with you? And I was just so reminded that our houses are full of doors and our businesses are full of doors. And yes. so we're constantly, are, you know, we're constantly going in and out of doors. And so I'm going to be more aware of this teaching every time I go through a door and, <laughs> and um, <laughs> in, in line with what you shared and the other gentleman about the snakes on the other side, we've got interior doors and we have exterior doors. And many years ago in the summertime, I stepped out of my front door and I usually step a pretty good stride and walked out and checked something. And then when I came back, it was nighttime. And when I came back, 
I noticed there was something funny on my doormat and I turned on my cell phone light and there was a huge black snake coiled up just enjoying the heat from the day. Oh, wow. So I stepped over that door out into the world. Yeah. And so uh, I just wanted to say as an image that sure enough, when we step out of our homes, we trust in the Lord and his protection. So amen, amen. 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 It's good. Amen. Excellent. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, we're we're all victors. Hallelujah. Uh, we we are the ones that we we've read the end of the book, and we know that we are the ones that are victorious. Uh, does someone else have something that they want to share? Not Cindy. Uh, yeah, by the time I get this situated. Um, yeah, I was thinking as you all were talking that um, as I'm trying to make changes in life, it just gives a better visual of, you know, the enemy kicking up the sand. I mean, I have run into some opposition. I've run into some major irritations and the like, and just got irritated or frustrated and, you know, just kind of didn't do anything about it. But uh, I'm going to take away from this with this teaching that uh, to address them instead of just assuming, well, there it is, but address it, deal with it and uh, get it under my feet, uh, yeah. get it out of the way, dismiss Amen. it, remove it yes. um, and to speak the word out loud, you know, not just think about it and, right. you know, like at work, uh, I can always go to the bathroom <laughs> and say yeah. something if I need to. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, but you know, to, to be more mindful, to be spiritually aware of my circumstances so that I don't just keep bumping into irritations, but realize these are tripping points. Yes. As I'm trying to enter into over that threshold. So yeah. I, mean. I appreciate this teaching. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're all going to a higher level higher level spiritually uh, many of us are are even in our uh, careers our our job situations uh, you're going to a higher level uh, promotion is is for you and um, and we're we're all believing the Lord and and I believe that we're together I believe that we are praying for one another uh, to to be victorious Hallelujah. Does anyone else have something that they want to share? Laura has something. All right, Laura. Hey, I just want to say I've had some interesting weeks and uh, uh, this teaching tonight really puts like a little uh, bow on it. And uh, I really see that I need to continue to go through the thresholds and stomp on those snakes. I'm not going to let those snakes get a hold of me anymore. Hallelujah. Yay. Yes. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that's great. Lord. Yes, that's what we want to hear. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Makes our heart leap up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there's more and more in this series as as the Lord is, is, is um, speaking to us about uh, because he wants his people uh, to be close to him. And uh, like Paul said, he wants us there in his presence. And uh, that's where uh, that's where fulfillment comes from. That's where uh, peace comes from and the rest, uh, the rest. And there are some of you that that we all need to enter into that rest uh, of his. And uh, we do that by believing uh, that, that he is able to keep that which we've committed unto him uh, against that day. Hallelujah. So, yes, Becky? Just to finish up with um, what Brother Fred mentioned about how that um, Jesus encountered snakes in that that knowing that um, 
when we are overcomers at, through the blood of the lamb, that we are manifesting the son of God. Yes, I mean, I mean, I mean. I loved about their testimony because what we happened and what Judy happened to her that will change that changed her forever was a manifestation mm -hmm. of the Son of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And and through Brother Fred, those testimonies. So um, I believe that's an encouragement to us that as we go through these doors, the whole thing is for the manifestation of, of the, the Son, Son of, of God. God. Amen. 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 Manifested. Amen. And sometimes just like like uh, Brother Jamie was saying, it feels like you're birthing. You feel like you're That's going right. to birth it because the whole earth groans for the manifestation, manifestation of, of the sons God. of God. So Amen. That's, that's an exciting part of what the Lord has, I believe, been saying to us tonight. Open doors for manifestation of the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So get ready. Get ready for the blessings of God uh, to overtake you. And I, and I know that uh, there are, there are some of you that uh, there, there has been some, um, some struggle in the last couple of weeks and uh, maybe even some discouraging words, uh, but I, but I believe that, uh, that just what Sister Becky was talking about, that the son of God is being manifested in you. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then that's that's what the world needs to see. Amen. That's what the it it's groaning. It's it's giving birth. And uh so uh let's give birth to those new things that God is wanting us to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well God bless you. Yes. Um uh, be safe. Can I ask a question? Yes. Sure. Um the gentleman um the couple iPad six. What is the gentleman's name? Uh, iPad six. Oh, oh, that's uh, David and Deb, Debbie. Uh huh. Um, the Lord they're from Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I just spirit of the Lord is heavy over me right now. The Lord has asked me to place you in prayer specifically. Um, David, is it? Yes. I'm going to pray for both of you, but there's something specific in your heart um, that I'm going to pray for until the Lord tells me to stop. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Very, 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 very dear and important to you. And just as it is important and dear to you, it is to the Lord. And he wants you to know that. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Until the Lord tells me to cease. Oh, Hallelujah. thank you. Thank you, I, Ruth. Yes. Thank amen. you so much. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, yes, Michelle, we, we wished Ruth a, a happy birthday uh, early, early on. Amen. Amen. But thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we love each one of you. And, and like I said, uh, go forth and be fruitful for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bye-bye. We'll see you in two love weeks. You. Two love weeks. You. Two weeks. Bye-bye. Love, love you, everybody. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>